Welcome to this miles by foot tour of Chicago O'Hare International Airport, code ORD. Over the last 75 years, O'Hare has grown from a small factory airfield to one of the largest, busiest, and most complex airports on the planet, with eight active runways, nine concourses, and over 50 million annual passengers. O'Hare was the busiest airport in the world by passenger count for 35 years straight during the 20th century. Today, it's the fourth busiest in the world, with nearly 150,000 travelers connecting in O'Hare every single day. This is one of the most complex tours I've done on this channel, so if you want to see more like them, please like and subscribe to follow along as we explore airports around the world. We'll cover every terminal and concourse at O'Hare today, how to move around between them, and what you can expect if Chicago is your origin, your destination, or if you're just connecting here. I've got everything organized by chapters too, so check the description to see the part you're interested in. No matter how big you think O'Hare is, it's one step bigger. Let's explore. Chicago O'Hare serves as a hub for American Airlines and especially United Airlines, headquartered downtown. In total, 11 domestic airlines and 35 international airlines connect Chicago to destinations on all six continents, more than 250 cities in total. These airlines use four different terminal buildings containing nine different concourses. Terminals 1, 2, and 3 are connected airside, and Terminal 5, mostly used by international carriers, is separate. You'll need to leave security to access Terminal 5, or if you land in Terminal 5 and need to access the other terminals. If you're outside security, you can connect to all four terminals and the rental car center using a free automated people mover, but we'll come back to that. Let's explore each terminal, and we'll start where O'Hare does at Terminal 1. Terminal 1 contains concourses B and C, there is no concourse A, separated into two buildings, and it's the primary terminal that supports United Airlines and their Star Alliance partners. United alone serves 160 year-round destinations and almost 40 seasonal ones all over the world, from the largest airports in Asia and Europe to regional feeder airlines across the Midwest. United can be found in all four terminals at O'Hare, so checking the departure boards on arrival is essential to see if you're just going to walk four gates or you'll be walking four concourses. Concourse B has 21 gates, and it's one of the oldest and most recognizable concourses at O'Hare, just past security in Terminal 1. Along with a standard fare of shops, newsstands, and restaurants, you can check out a real-life Brachiosaurus skeleton in this concourse, masked up for travel even. Seventeen gates are in the main hall, and a small extension at the northern end of the concourse contains the last four gates. The terminal contains two United Clubs, one across the way catty corner from B6, and the other by B18, near the entrance to the northern extension. Terminal 1's other concourse, Concourse C, is connected to B through an underground tunnel, much like in Detroit's McNamara Terminal. A colorful static light display decorates the long tunnel. Concourse C is home to both short and long haul flights for United. At the top of the tunnel escalator in C, you'll find a United service desk, another United club, as well as United's flagship lounge, the Polaris Lounge open to Polaris business class passengers as well as outbound International Star Alliance travelers in business or first class. For plebs like me, there's also a sizable food court in the center of Concourse C, to the right as you come up the escalator with lots of different options. Terminal 2 contains two concourses, E and F, and it's home to Delta and Air Canada as well as some United flights. It's also where you'll check in and collect your luggage for Alaska and JetBlue. The terminal has a shared departure hall that branches off into separate concourses about halfway down. If you need to connect between concourses in this terminal, there's a hallway that connects them to make your walk a bit easier. Delta's presence has shrunk here over the last 30 years to just hub service, serving eight out of their nine hubs. Sorry, LAX. Delta does have a Sky Club located at the split to concourse E near gate E7. Even though they don't normally use this terminal, there's a United Club near the entrance to Concourse F. Air Canada connects their three largest airports to Chicago, usually served by low-numbered E-gates. The lower-numbered gates for these concourses are in the main departure hall, and some are even outside before you enter the terminal, so make sure you don't miss them there. 
This terminal's concourses are a bit tired. Most of O'Hare looks a little older, but in many cases that's part of its industrial charm. I'd love to see them modernize their non-hub terminals too. Terminal 2 is also home to an exhibit on the airport's namesake, Lieutenant Commander Edward Butch O'Hare. In 1942, Butch became the Navy's first fighter ace and Medal of Honor recipient in the Pacific. A year later, in November of 1943, he led one of the first nighttime carrier raids against Japan, but was killed when his Hellcat was shot down. The Hellcat on display is a real contemporary sibling of the one he flew on that mission. In 1949, the airport was renamed to O'Hare International Airport. Its original name, Orchard Field, is still represented in the airport's three-digit code. Terminal 3 has four concourses down three departure halls. This terminal serves American Airlines and some international departures on their One World partners, while also serving commuter airlines and Spirit, who use O'Hare as a focus city. Concourse G is the simplest at O'Hare, it's just one long hallway. G is primarily used by regional American Eagle flights, but the first few gates are used by JetBlue and Alaska. JetBlue serves their northeastern centers at Boston and JFK, while Alaska serves all five of their hubs, including their namesake at Anchorage, as well as Boise, Idaho, one of their focus cities. While not as prominent as United, American still serves 120 nonstop destinations year-round, including international service to Central America, and dozens of seasonal routes to domestic destinations throughout the Americas, Europe, and the Caribbean. The smallest regional flights use the downstairs gates near the end of the terminal, and you can find an Admiral's Club across from gate G8. Even if you don't use the club, there's lots of seating in this concourse, and it's quieter than many other places in the airport, making it a nice place to install yourself if you've got a long layover. The entrance to Concourse G is found under a rotunda, cleverly marked rotunda, with several dining options. On the mezzanine, you'll find O'Hare's USO Lounge for active and retired service members and their families, and a seating area anyone can use, complete with some nice airfield views. The next section of Terminal 3 contains Concourses H and K, both of which serve American. Perhaps the most recognizable at O'Hare, at least for me, the departure hall to these concourses is festooned with national flags from around the world. Like Terminal 2, the concourses split off halfway down the departure hall. You'll find an Admiral's Club as well as American's Customer Service Center at this fork. These concourses primarily serve larger, mainline services for American and thus tend to be busy any hour of the day. I recommend beelining the Concourse G next door if you need some breathing room. Terminal 3's last concourse is Concourse L, which is home to American, Spirit, Commuter Airlines, and departures for JAL and Iberia, two of American's One World partners. Concourse L has two departure halls that split off at the entrance, but both are labeled as L gates. Gates L1 through L11 are down the main hall straight ahead. Try not to get blinded by the shiny metal accents everywhere. You see, years ago, American's aircraft weren't totally painted, showing off their natural aluminum finish, so this terminal design made more sense back then. American flights of all kinds use Concourse L, big and small. At the end of this hall, JAL flies services to Tokyo's main international airport at Narita, as well as their more centrally located airport at Haneda. Iberia flies nonstop from this terminal to their Spanish base at Madrid every afternoon. Gate L11 is used by several commuter airlines, currently Cape Air and Denver Air Connection, connecting small towns in the Midwest to O'Hare and other hubs at subsidized rates. This hall also supports Spirit Airlines, third in destinations from O'Hare behind American and United. As of November 2022, Spirit flies to 15 destinations, but these change seasonally more than most airlines. I'm sure there's a reason, but Spirit only uses the southern gates in this hall. Maybe to remind travelers escaping Chicago winners where they're headed? Hold on, are Chicagoans just birds? Anyway, the other hall of Concourse L is quite new, added on to service additional regional traffic for America. Walking down this hall, you'll find five additional gates and great views of the aircraft serving all of Concourse L. There's only a couple food options though, so you might have to go to the other hall if you're hungry. At the entrance to both halls of Concourse L, you'll find an Admiral's Club. 
These three terminals are all easily connected airside without much hassle if not a bit of walking. Terminal 5, however, is physically separate from the other terminals, and while there used to be an airside transfer service that connected terminals 3 and 5, it hasn't been active for several years. Terminal 5 is home to most outbound international travel, all international arrivals for any carriers that aren't pre-cleared, and low-cost carrier Frontier and, surprisingly, Southwest, who started service to O'Hare early in 2021. If you're connecting from terminals 1, 2, or 3 to Terminal 5, you'll need to leave security, take the landside people mover, and clear security again. I've done this three times over the course of my travels, and it's not too bad. Terminal 5 has just one boomerang-shaped concourse, Concourse M, with 19 gates total. Frontier uses gates to the left as you enter the concourse, serving two international and two domestic destinations, Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic and Cancun, as well as Orlando and San Juan, Puerto Rico. Southwest uses gates all the way down to the right, and their services now cover nine of their largest markets with around 25 departures total each day. But my with their larger hub at Midway, Southwest is expanding, even as some carriers are still re-establishing their core routes after the pandemic. When taken together, O'Hare already makes up about 10% of Southwest's total traffic in Chicago. The remaining carriers in Terminal 5 are international carriers, most with just one flight a day in and out from their hubs around the world. If you're flying internationally with these carriers, make your way to Terminal 5 when you arrive at O'Hare. If you're flying these carriers, you'll depart from Terminals 1, 2, and 3. This is an important distinction, and it can add considerable challenge to a connection you might need to make. Make sure when you book your ticket, especially if it's a separate transaction to buy the international ticket, that you allow plenty of time to transfer. Thanks to an inbound delay, my shortest international connection here was about 90 minutes, and as you can imagine, that was way too close. Bear in mind that unless you're pre-cleared at your departure airport, you'll always arrive at Terminal 5, no matter what airline you're flying, because Terminal 5 houses O'Hare's Customs and Immigrations facilities. That's not a great pitch, but there's a real benefit to flying internationally to and from Chicago. O'Hare features a dizzying amount of international destinations, and its central location, competitive environment, and market position mean it's one of the most consistently affordable places for flying across an ocean, especially if your ticket starts in O'Hare. I've debated making a video about how to book and prepare for international travel. If that's something you'd like to hear my experience and perspective on, let me know in the comments. While it's pretty big, Concourse M is simply designed. Once you're past security, it's just one curved departure hole. At the center, just past security, you'll find duty-free shops, some restaurants, but limited seating. Best to get your food here, then go to your gate. Down the concourse, there isn't much. So that's all the concourses, but how do you get around once you're landside? Chicago O'Hare has a landside people mover called the ATS, with stops at each of their four terminals and one for the Consolidated Rental Car Facility, or CONRAC for short. The CONRAC is past Terminal 5 and contains all rental car providers' offices, as well as a garage for their rentals on site. This is a huge upgrade for the typical car rental experience, involving long waits for shuttles and distant parking lots. The Conrack supports all major rental car providers and a few smaller outfits too. Chicago's terminals are well connected, and it's well connected to the city too. Chicago O'Hare is located 15 miles northwest of the Chicago Loop, deep in the city's urban sprawl. It's the final stop for the CTA's Blue Line, which you can ride downtown in about 45 minutes. The Blue Line station is below Terminal 2, but you can walk there from Terminals 1, 2, or 3. Head downstairs to the baggage claim, then follow the signs above for Trains to City with the CTA logo. You can transfer downtown to Chicago's other airport, Chicago Midway, but more on that in another video. You can also take the Metra, Chicago's commuter rail service, which stops fewer times en route, is faster, goes more places in the metro area, but it's more expensive. The Metra is accessible on the other side of the Conrack. When you get off the ATS, go downstairs, out the front doors, and hang a right following the sidewalk around the garage until you see the small building straight ahead. Chicago O'Hare is an iconic airport, both practically speaking and frankly for the vibe. Some terminals are newer than others, and I believe both serve a purpose to help you feel like you're in Chicago. I've always thought of Chicago, 
not New York, LA, or even Washington, DC, as the all-American city. Hard-working people, making the best of what they've been given, working together to build a stronger community. O'Hare's a great airport to represent those who live and work here, and I hope this tour has put you at ease or even excited you about visiting one of the busiest airports in the world. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to Miles by Foot. Your continued support through subscribing and watching are what make this channel possible, as are the comments that you share with the community that continues to grow. Next time, we'll do what will likely be my longest walking tour to date of O'Hare. Then we'll look towards connecting between Chicago's two airports. Again, to each of you, thank you for watching, and keep moving forward.